The renin angiotensin agents are very important in both chronic heart failure and an acute management of high blood pressure. We know that these agents reduce morbidity and mortality in heart failure. They reduce aldosterone secretion and water retention, and they also reduce total peripheral resistance or vascular resistance through its antihypertensive effects. I've listed here all of the ACE inhibitors, and here are all of the ARBs. Now, the angiotensin receptor blockers have been in studies shown to be non-inferior to ACE inhibitors. You'll generally find on the wards that cardiologists favor ACE inhibitors and the ARBs are favored by everyone else. I don't think there's really a right answer in ACE versus ARB. Uh, the direct renin inhibitors are a relatively new class that I discussed in my hypertension lecture. We don't have a lot of great information on heart failure at this time. Now, that still may be uh, useful and beneficial in heart failure, but at this point in time, in 2016, it's not routinely used. Let's move on to the beta blockers. Remember that in heart failure, we only use beta blockers once the patient has been stabilized. Beta blockers may actually be harmful in heart, acute heart failure because it may suppress cardiac function. Beta blockers work by two major ways. First of all, they reduce heart rate and increase stroke volume. That's because when you reduce heart rate, the heart has more time to fill. And as it has more time to fill, each stroke will become more uh, efficient and powerful. It also reduces overall mortality and progression of chronic heart failure. Carvedilol is the favorite beta blocker in heart failure. Major studies have shown reduction of morbidity and mortality. Carvedilol has both al has all alpha, beta, and beta two effects, so it's a very effective agent, and uh, it's very well uh, tolerated in heart failure. Nabivalol is a newer beta blocker that has just come recently to the United States and Canada and has been in Europe for several years. It has actions on nitric oxide. At this point in time, it's relatively investigational in the US and Canada, but there's a lot of experience in, in Europe which shows that it does quite well.